Hi, welcome to the introduction of the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. I'm Mark Bernard, and I will be your narrator for this course. During the executive overview, we're going to be looking at delivery strategy, training summary, governance, key activities, NIST Cybersecurity Framework domains, Framework Core, Maturity Tiers, Cybersecurity Framework Profile, Continual Improvement, Risk Management, Risk Management Integration, Implementation Strategy, Managing Cultural Changes, Communication Criteria, Intelligence Sharing, Project Management, Potential Impacts, and we'll wrap it up with next steps. Delivery Strategy, Bridging In. Cybersecurity has become a high priority risk for every organization and information that was never traditionally available to the public and criminals is now more accessible. It is the responsibility of every manager to know what assets are in use so that they can manage the associated risks. Instructional objective. Participants will learn how to scope and implement the NIST cybersecurity framework in a meaningful way that will leverage existing enterprise investments in information security. Rationale. The course facilitator will review each NIST cybersecurity framework lesson while connecting the dots between theoretical model and operational reality. On February 12, 2013, President Obama issued Executive Order 13636, Improving Critical Infrastructure for Cybersecurity. The President's action led to the creation of the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. Today's situation. The average cost of a cybersecurity breach is $3.7 million. Most organizations can reduce their risk exposure to a cybersecurity breach by 87.8%. A formal cybersecurity program can reduce the cost of a breach to $325,000. The cost of implementing a formal cybersecurity program ranges from $50,000 to $275,000 depending on the size of the organization. The reoccurring annual maintenance cost of a cybersecurity program is $50,000. A cybersecurity program will pay for itself after one attempted breach. Implementing a cybersecurity program is like buying preventative insurance. Healthcare records are considered to be the most valuable out there in the black market and they are worth $50 per record. Financial records come in second at $8 per record. The annual cost of credit monitoring is $233 per record for healthcare records and $215 for financial records. Governance. Goals. The Cybersecurity Governance Committee will be formed to provide an effective joint form which will contribute to the following goals. Strategic and tactical decision making which supports the cybersecurity management system and its program. Balanced and informed review of cybersecurity services contributing to a range of enterprise service delivery initiatives and proactive cybersecurity alignment with higher joint level governance functions to improve the resilience and agility of enterprise security. Key activities. Number one, define scope and governance committee. Number two, identify legal obligations. Number three, document current state based on gap assessment. Number four, conduct a risk assessment. Number five, document future state and a roadmap. Number six, initiate corrective action and preventative action. Number seven, communicate risk treatment plans to internal and external stakeholders. NIST Cybersecurity Framework Domains Identify, Protect, Detect, Respond, and Recover. And over the next few slides, we'll break these out a little bit further into subcontrols and sections. Core Framework Under the Core Framework, we break out the five primary domains. Under Identify, we have sub-processes for Asset Management, Business Environment, Governance, Risk Assessment, and Risk Management Strategy. Under Protect, we have Access Control, Awareness Training, Data Security, Information Protection, Processes and Procedures, Maintenance, Protective Technology. Under Detect, we have Anomalies and Events, Security, Continual Monitoring, Detection Processes. Under Four, Respond, we have Response Planning, Communications, Analysis, Mitigation and Improvements. And under Five, we have Recovery, planning, improvements, and communications. Maturity Tiers. Within the NIST Cybersecurity Framework, there are four tiers. Each tier attempts to assess the adoption of risk management process, the integration of risk management, and external participation. 
Tier 1 represents not adopted. Tier 2, it's approved but not rolled out. Tier 3, risk management is approved and rolled out to the enterprise. Tier 4, it's an adaptive process where it takes lessons learned and implements change to make it better. Cybersecurity Framework Profile. On this slide, you see what we call a star chart. The star chart helps us to plot from current state to future state. One of the exercises that students will walk through is the evaluation of their current risk management process, the integration of risk management within their enterprise, and external participation. Continual Improvement. On this slide, you see a roadmap. This is a strategic roadmap that plots out change for the next three years. What we've done is we've taken the things that we've learned from our gap assessment and from our risk assessments and we've plotted them out to make improvements, moving us from Tier 1 to Tier 4 over the next three years. Risk Management. Risk management is fundamentally important to the success of adopting the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. On this slide, we describe a seven-step process. Risk management is also identified extensively within the tiers one to four and also under the primary domain identified. Students participating in the course will walk through a risk assessment of their own and they'll learn these steps. In step one, we evaluate whether or not we're looking at an asset and whether that asset has been registered in a database. Step two, we determine if it's a major change to the organization, its infrastructure, and determine whether or not uh, appropriate topologies and network diagrams have been updated. In step three, we look at the potential threats. Step four, we look at potential vulnerabilities. Step five, we evaluate the control selection and determine whether controls exist or not. If they do exist already, then we may make recommendations on those. On step six, we finalize a report, present it to management for next steps. In step seven, we create a risk treatment plan to follow up on. Risk management integration. In the previous slide, we talked about the importance of risk management within the NIST cybersecurity framework. Also defined under the tiers one to four is the integration activities of risk management. In this technique, we're gonna teach students how to create weighted sheets. These sheets will allow project managers, procurement officers, also software development, and people doing mergers and acquisitions to conduct their own risk assessments. Should their assessment exceed the threshold, they would directly involve the security office. However, if not, they would continue along and file the document. We would update the information into the portfolio or the asset inventory to determine what are the risks associated with that assets. Service managers, VPs, or executives can then roll up these risk ratings to determine what are the risks associated with particular lines of service or products. This is an extremely valuable process that students will enjoy and get great benefit from. Implementation strategy. On this slide, we describe the seven steps that NIST recommend to implement the NIST cybersecurity framework. Step one, prioritize and scope. Step two, orient and identify legal obligations. Step three, create a current profile based on the gap assessment. Step four, conduct a risk assessment. Step five, create the tiger profile. Step six, determine, analyze, and prioritize the gap closure. And step seven, execute an implementation action plan. Managing cultural changes. For some organizations, the adoption of the NIST cybersecurity framework will be dramatic. For others, it won't be because they already protect information. On this chart, we describe the kind of emotions that employees will go through as they slowly and gradually get on board with the NIST cybersecurity program. Our experience in implementing these types of programs will help you prepare communications and to lead your group and your team through these changes. Communication criteria. There are several steps that we must go through in order to effectively develop the communication that's going to happen. Defining the purpose for the communication, identifying the team that's going to review it, circulating it to the team and gathering their consensus, garnering authorization to publish, confirming the distribution, and distributing the message. Intelligence sharing. This is an important topic within the NIST cybersecurity framework. Sources of knowledge concerning threats, sources of knowledge concerning vulnerabilities and knowledge concerning risk mitigation and tools technique may want to be shared with groups that are similar to you or within your industry. 
Project Management, Secure Knowledge Management Incorporated has developed extensive practices using the project management methodology known as PMBOK developed by the Project Management Institute and we will use these skills and knowledge to help you implement your NIST cybersecurity framework. Potential impacts. It wouldn't be fair of us not to suggest that adopting a framework like the NIST cybersecurity framework may not have some impact on the organization. In fact, there are several areas that could be impacted. Some of those include existing policies, policy exceptions, existing practices might change, also new practices might be added, and as well as security standards and disciplinary practices if they do not already exist. Potential impacts continued. Data classification could change within the organization. The use of system development methodologies might change. Security architecture could change, as well as the governance of information assets under the care of VPs and executives. And finally, potential impacts could affect the oversight and governance of security, new employee orientation, confidentiality agreements and other legal agreements, third party and underpinning contracts and contractors and how they work for the organization. These could all change. Next steps. Register as an individual or a group at our website. Contact us for group rates. Also, we have optional materials that are available such as workbooks and we have exams for certification. I'm Mark Bernard and I want to thank you for your time and hope that you have an awesome day.